Bangladesh is gearing up for parliamentary elections this weekend with Prime Minister Sheikh Hasina almost assured of a fifth term. But the main opposition party, the BNP, is boycotting the vote and calling on the Prime Minister to step down. Since this will leave voters with little choice, how many will bother to even turn out? DW's Zobair Ahmed reports. In the capital Dhaka, the streets are filled with posters of the ruling party and their allies as parliamentary elections approach in Bangladesh. The main opposition, the Bangladesh Nationalist Party, BNP, is boycotting the elections and demanding Prime Minister Sheikh Hasina's resignation. Senior BNP leaders, including Moin Khan, are urging voters to abstain from voting. We do not want to legitimize this illegal, farcical and comical election of our Malik. That is the whole point. Obviously, we are always prepared to take part in genuine, free, fair and participatory election. And we made this clear again and again. Prime Minister Sheikh Hasina is seeking a fourth consecutive term. Her party, Awami League, has been running the government since 2009. Her former advisor, Moshir Rahman, rejects the BNP's criticism and blames the party's leadership for their absence from power. The other thing I would say is, when was the last time BNP won an election? If a party does not participate in the election for three consecutive voting, People tend to forget that and they do not have a credible leadership now, they do not have a credible policy. With BNP out of the race, the few remaining parties pose no threat to the Awami League. The stage is set for Bangladesh's parliamentary elections, but with the main opposition absent, the challenge for Bangladesh's election commission and Sheikh Hasina's Awami League parties to inspire resounding voter turnout on election day. Although the opposition has already rejected this election, for the ruling party, the legitimacy and acceptance of this election essentially depend on how many people show up at the polling stations on January 7th. But many voters like Dawan Jubair Islam feel without any opposition, it's no longer a democratic election, but a selection. Participation by the opposition is a must. Otherwise, it is not a democratic election. If the opposition does not take part in the election, there is no need for voting. Former election commissioner Shakhawat Hussain echoes the sentiment, emphasizing the need for a true contest for meaningful participation. The very fact that uh, everybody is now trying to say if the people participate or voter participates, it is participated. No, it's not. Unless the contest between parties, unless it is, it, it is, it is participatory in, in, in that sense, uh, and uh, you have multi-party participation, then the voter turnout would always be low, however you try. As the Awami League ramps up its voter mobilization campaign, uncertainty lingers about just how many of Bangladesh's 119 million voters they can convince to go to the polls. And we can now speak to Ali Riaz. He's a political scientist who specializes in Bangladeshi politics. He's a non-resident senior fellow at the Atlantic Council and president of the American Institute of Bangladesh. Welcome to the show. The opposition, BNP, is boycotting the election. We heard it. They're saying it won't be free or fair. How justified do you think is that allegation? It is no longer an allegation. If we look at the uh, fact on the ground, uh, there is no possibility of having a free and fair election. The opposition has been pushed aside from the election. They have been uh, thrown into jail. But most importantly, this is an election without choice. Those who are competing are practically the allies of the government. And also those who are independents are basically the members of the ruling party. And the administration has not played a, a, a you know a neutral role what we have witnessed so far. So given all these conditions, uh, this, is, this cannot be considered as a free and fair election by any standard. And you say the opposition has been pushed aside. What do you think of their strategy then? What is the BNP hoping to achieve with its election boycott? And can this strategy succeed? 
So far, what we have seen since the middle of last year, the opposition political parties, particularly BNP, has pursued a nonviolent path. They wanted to actually bring it out that even if they had participated, as they did in 2018 election, this wouldn't have been free and fair election. So practically, they have exposed, and this is the strategy they have taken, that exposing this ruling party's, uh, you know, uh, ruling party's design to hold an election which would deliver a you know, confirmed victory to them. Going forward, they, of course, would expect a popular mobilization post-election, and definitely there is an expectation, not only among the opposition parties, but beyond that, that the international community would step in to save democracy in Bangladesh. In the meantime, Sheikh Hasina looks certain to win a fourth term in power. How much real support does she have among the public? That's a good question. We'd like to know, as a matter of fact, that if there was a free and fair election and an inclusive election, we would have known. I mean, had there been a free, fair election, could she win? I don't know, because uh, I guess she could. If you look at the, polit at the political party, Awami League is a big political party, one of the two major political parties, and previous elections when it held uh, fairly, at least 32, 33 percent, and sometimes more than that, have supported. But she was in power as an incumbent. There is always an anti-incumbency factor. There is always questions with respect to what she can offer, her party can offer. So you would not never know. Does she have little uh, some support? Of course, as a political party, as a leader, she does have. But you would never know because he, she, and her her party has decided not to have an inclusive election, a free election, fair election. Since 1971, when Bangladesh gained its independence, many of its elections have been mired in violence and controversy. Can Bangladesh, in your opinion, be considered a democracy today? As of now, I would say that Bangladesh is uh, practically what uh, many research organizations have called as a moderate autocracy. Because what we have seen 2000, uh, since 2011, there is a serious democratic erosion. And it is on a path to have a personalized autocracy because all the avenues of political participation has been constrained by this government. We have seen three elections with this, the one that is within a day or two. This is this would be the third election, which is not a fair and free election. And definitely uh, this election is going to deliver a victory, uh, a foregone conclusion, so to speak. You know, all these things indicate uh, beyond the election, we would see the, uh, the the freedom of expression has dwindled. We have seen the freedom of assembly has been dwindled. dwindled. There has been persecution of the opposition. In some cases, uh, persecution through prosecution that I've seen. So all these things indicate that the democracy has seriously eroded and Bangladesh is pretty much on the verge of being a personalistic uh, autocracy. That was political scientist Ali Riaz. Thank you so much for giving us your analysis. Thank you.